Hey guys, NerdKing101 here, and today we're going to be talking about the debate that has been going on for a while in the anime community, which is My Hero Academia vs. One Piece, which series is better. But before we get into that, I would just like to pose a question to you guys, that would you guys be interested in me starting like a vlog channel where I could upload some vlog style video where I just talked to you guys on camera and did things like that every once in a while? It wouldn't be a weekly thing, it would just be whenever I had something to vlog about or talk about. Yeah, but yeah, would you guys be interested in a vlog channel? Just let me know in the comment section down below. There will also be a poll on screen in which you will be able to vote yes or no to the idea of a vlog channel. So use whatever method is easiest for you. If it's easier to just vote in the poll or comment it, do that. I don't care. Just let me know whether or not you would want to see a vlog channel. But now that we've got that over with, let's just get into the main topic of this video which is My Hero Academia vs. One Piece. Now, Roger Bates did an amazing stream which really goes into the debate in detail and talks about things such as character design, character arcs, and character development, characterization, and much, much more with a ton of other YouTubers, so there's no real reason for me to go super in detail with those parts of the discussion. Now today, I just want to talk about my thoughts on the debate overall, and what I think of it, because I honestly feel like this debate is a little ridiculous. Now, I don't think it's ridiculous to compare My Hero Academia and One Piece in general. They are both the same genre of story, and are both published in the same magazine, and everybody has every right to have this debate. However, there is one part of the, the debate that I saw on Twitter that really bothered me, which is that I saw people comparing what each series accomplished in 20 volumes. The problem I have with this is that any theory can accomplish quite a bit within 20 volumes. Dragon Ball has already entered the Cyan arc at the 20th volume. By its 20th volume, Fairy Tale within the Erastion Stace arc, and that's not even very good. This is past the point where most people say Fairy Tale got bad, which is around after the Tower of Heaven arc. And while I don't think the original Dragon Ball is a bad story, the quality of the writing did decrease between the first and twentieth volume pretty drastically, and continued to decrease after that. Both of these stories by their twentieth volume had achieved far more than One Piece did by its twentieth volume, but but none of the writing in either series was anywhere near the level of the things that Oda had written so far in One Piece. The general quality of everything in One Piece was still higher. The question should not be how much had One Piece achieved in 20 volume compared to My Hero Academia, but how good is the content in each series for 20 volume. Because by the logic presented in this argument that I've been seeing, Fairy Tale is better than both series, and so is Dragon Ball because they've accomplished a lot more, even though the narrative in both theories is far weaker than both My Hero Academia and One Piece. At the end of the day, this is really a subjective thing, because it all depends on what story you found more compelling, because both stories for the first 20 volumes are solid. I really can't think of any major problems I have with either story within the first 20 volumes. Granted, I'm still in the process of catching up to My Hero Academia, and I'm only on chapter 155, but so far, everything in the theory have been 100% solid. It's also worth noting that One Piece is also a very different type of shonen battle manga from My Hero Academia. Well, My Hero Academia is a straight up battle manga, like the fights really drive the story, the battles of One Piece don't really drive the story very often. At the end of the day, if you look at One Piece thematically and narratively, it really isn't about fighting, but the adventure and bond of the crew. But if we are going to compare something that I do think was valid that a lot of people compared with just the overall way the stories are paced. Not how much they achieve in a certain number of volumes, but just the week to week pacing, which I actually think they're both kind of bad at. I think My Hero Academia is very fast paced, almost too fast paced, and I think its transition arcs, or chapters in most cases, are pretty weak. Because honestly, I think most of the time, especially the chapter after the overhaul arc, is really jarring. It's really just Deku narrating over some pictures telling us what happened. One of the most important rules of storytelling is show, don't tell, and the aftermath of the overhaul arc is really glossed over in order to move on to the next thing. So I think that's a pretty big issue, and with One Piece, it's kind of the opposite. I feel that when Oda gets going at certain points, especially during the climax of an arc, 
the pacing can be really good, but I feel like most of the time, almost every arc, there's a large portion of it, like the parts of Whole Cake Island when you're running away from Big Mom after the Chateau Falls, that just feel really slow, and nothing really happens, and you're really dragged out, and are really poorly paced. But when it comes to the pacing, I honestly don't think that's really an issue that either series beats the other on. I think they both fail with pacing in different areas, honestly. One thing I will say is that I do think when One Piece is pacing it bad, it's more noticeable than My Heroes, because My Hero just jumps right into the next thing and uses it to distract you from how bad that jump was, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the jump was bad and jarring. One thing I saw people talking about was the female characters, and I just want to say this on the note of a female character, because this is really subjective. First of all, yes, Horikoshi's female characters look better than Oda's. I don't think anybody is disagreeing with that, because Horikoshi's females look like real people. The women in One Piece look very similar. In fact, they normally almost all look exactly the same, just with different hairstyles and different side moves. And Horikoshi's are realistic. They actually look like women that could exist in this fictional version of our world. They're also not very sexualized, which makes it really much easier to take them seriously during serious action scenes, because you're not just laughing at how absurd some of the scenes look because of how sexualized and fan servicey they are. The girls in My Hero Academia are weird in the sense that they're really likable and fun characters, and some of them are even pretty competent and powerful, but they get sidelined a lot without really being sidelined. Like, during the overhaul arc, you know that the girls are out there doing things, and helping, but Horikoshi just doesn't show it. So it's once again, show, don't tell. We keep hearing about how great and powerful these girls are, but Horikoshi doesn't want to show it because he'd rather focus on, like, Deku and Kirishima. The girls in One Piece also suffer from lacks of fights, but they also still do things and are on screen a lot. Like, Nami was around a lot during Whole Cake Island. She didn't have any one-on-one -on -one fights, but she still did things that helped out, and she was still there and was a part of the narrative. Ochako wasn't even really in the overhaul arc. She just showed up in the beginning and helped out a little at the end. So yeah, honestly, I think the female character, I think Horikoshi does have a slight edge, I'm not gonna lie. They look better, I think there's more of them. I mean, obviously, let's be honest, the Straw Hat Pirates are a sausage set, but there's more of them, and they're more powerful, and in general, they do more, but they also have a tendency to get sidelined and then literally not show up for a while, as opposed to One Piece, where even if they get sidelined, they're still there contributing to the narrative. However, Nami and Robin also have really compelling backstories that make them really hard to dislike. They also have interesting character arcs that they go through in any lobby at Arlong park respectively. But I don't think there's a clear answer for this. The only thing that I think is objectively better about My Hero Academia female characters is that they have better design, so there are more of them, and in terms of battle, they seem way more competent than the One Piece characters that you did clue people like Bo Hancock and Big Mom. But overall, I think the problem with this comparison is while they're both battle shonen, they're also both trying to do very different things. One Piece is a story about adventure, and the bonds of the crew, and the journey to becoming King of the Pirates, while My Hero Academia is an analysis of the characters and analyzing what it means to each character to be a hero, and Deku's journey to becoming the number one hero by getting stronger and fighting more and more opponents. Well, getting stronger is part of becoming King of the Pirates, but you need to be strong enough to get the Rattel. It's not the core of the series. The core of the series is the adventure the Straw Hats go on and the experiences they have along the way. My Hero Academia focuses on all the characters and what being a hero means to each of them. And it goes even farther as to taking a look at the hero society that they all live in and deconstructing it. Both narratives are inherently vastly different from one another, so you can't really compare them on a narrative level. In fact, I would think it's even more fair to compare my hero to Naruto, which does at times examine what it means to be a ninja to each of the characters. But yeah, that's about all I have to say on the matter, and while I do think the debate isn't good fun, I think when a lot of people are making arguments for either theory, they tend to ignore what the other theory is about to help them make their argument. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, tell me what you thought on this topic in the comment section down below, as well as remember to tell me what or not you think I should start a vlog channel in the comment section or in the poll that will be on screen. Also, the link to Roger Bates' live stream where he debates this matter with a ton of other people. 
Nataku showed up, Dustin Reacts, who started this whole thing in there, and a ton of other awesome people will be linked to Mr. Christian Moss down below. It's like three hours, and it's lots of fun. Go give it a watch. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more anime content. I also do superhero comic book content, like Marvel and DC stuff, from time to time. So you can also subscribe if you're interested in that stuff. And of all that else, guys, have a great day. This is Nerd King 101 signing out.